Should we vote? The short answer is yes, I, I think we should. As uh, Americans, as citizens of the United States of America, I think uh, even though we're Christians first, I've always said I'm a Christian first uh, before I'm anything else, but I also am very grateful to have been born in what I believe in my biased opinion is the greatest nation on the face of the planet. With all due respect to uh, all, all of my friends that are around the world, but I admit I'm a little biased to my country. And if I was born in your country, those of you watching this that live in another country, I would be thankful for uh, my for the, that country as well, because as a you know, I used to I served as a, a, a missionary, and I've been to uh, several other countries around the world, and I have found that in every country, uh, there there are uh, beautiful things to behold uh, and to appreciate about every culture and every country that is different. This is a beautiful world when you get past. The, the ugliness that sin has done to this world, you find that God's creation in, in this world still remains to be a very amazing and beautiful uh, world. But I, as a red-blooded American, I am grateful to, to be a citizen of the United States of America. This is where I was born, here in the United States of America. And one of the things that sets our nation apart from other nations, with all due respect, is the fact that we have the freedom to vote. America is a constitutional republic. And what that simply means is that the highest law of the land is uh, a document called the Constitution of the United States. And so uh, that we, we, are to, uh, we are to live and make laws according uh, to the, the United States Constitution. So we are a constitutional republic. Republic, but uh, within this constitutional republic, uh, we also have the freedom of democracy and the ability to voice our opinion through voting. We can vote for our leader leaders uh, on the federal level, all the way on down to the uh, to the uh, state level, and then the civic level. And I think that that is a privilege that uh, a privilege that many countries around the world will never know. And I think that uh, priv privileges and liberties like this are things that we should not take for granted. And, and, and to preserve these liberties, I think that we should participate in these liberties that we have, that other nations, uh, other people around the world wish they had. They wish they had the ability to enjoy some of these liberties, to vote like we do. And so I think that... Uh, I think that it is a good thing to vote. Now, I know some Christians, uh, wonderful Christians, Bible-believing Christians that are of the opinion, not, not many like this, but there are some that would say that they think uh, voting is a waste of time and they have their arguments and some of their arguments, uh, I can see their point. Uh, one of the arguments that some brethren have had before is that, you know, uh, we're just pilgrims and strangers passing through. This world is not my home. And, uh, you know, they're basing that off of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, where it talks about the saints of old who considered themselves strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a, 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 a country. They, they were looking forward to a, a better country than even that of the United States of America. And so I, I appreciate uh, those that are of those opinion. I would just have to respectfully disagree with them. Uh, the way I look at it is like this. Here's another perspective for you. Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, I'll go ahead and read the, the verses to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verses 19 through 23 says, For though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself servant unto all, these are the words of the Apostle Paul, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things 
to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. So Paul the Apostle explains here that in whatever culture he was in or, or whatever the culture of the people was that he was trying to win to the Lord, he would participate in their culture. Now, obviously, you're going to run into situations where you're going to have to draw the line when it comes to this principle that Paul taught us here of being all things to all men. I understand this having been a foreign, uh, a former missionary, being a former missionary, uh, other countries or any cultures, other cultures where I was preaching the gospel, I would participate in their culture. You know, they have different food that is particular to their culture. They may have some different ways that they go about certain things that are particular to their culture. And I didn't see anything wrong. It, for example, clothing uh, that is a little bit different uh, uh, in regard to uh, their culture. I'm wearing what is called a guayavera. And this is a particular shirt that is popular in some Hispanic and Asian cultures. It's a cultural thing that is common in these cultures. And there's nothing wrong with participating in some of the unique uh, things of other cultures so long as those things do not violate the principles of the Word of God. Now, when culture contradicts the Word of God, well, of course, as Christians, we're Christians first, right? We go with the word of God over culture. But when culture does not contradict the word of God, like this shirt I'm wearing does not contradict the word of God, okay? It's a cultural thing that is popular in the Philippines and, and in Latin culture as well. And there's nothing wrong with wearing a shirt like this. So uh, to kind of fit in a little bit better, you might dress the way certain people dress in other cultures if God were to call you to serve as a missionary uh, in, in those different places. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what Paul the Apostle is teaching us uh, here. And so I kind of take that same principle when it comes to my mindset as a U.S. American. I am a citizen. Right now, I pastor a church in the United States of America, and I am a citizen of this country, and voting is something that is a big deal to us as the United States of America. It's it's one of the things that sets us apart from other countries. And so I, I think it's a good thing to participate in that. And so I, I the way I look at it is let's do everything we can to get good people into office. I mean, would to God that we had more Christians uh, in high places, uh, you, you know, uh, folks, or at least folks, that uh, have a fear of God and have a respect uh, for Christianity and the things of God, man, people like that, let's do everything we can to support them. Uh, so that, it, 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 that would be a whole lot better than having folks that are anti-God and anti-Bible and anti-Christianity in office. And we have a sh our share of people like that uh, in government positions today and look at the damage that that has done in our country. So rather than just sitting around complaining about it, uh, voting is one way that you can have a voice uh, in that matter. So I'm I'm for voting, and uh, but the thing is, you you when you do vote, j let me just add this to this discussion. Just make sure that when you vote, that you vote with the awareness of the fact that no matter what happens after you vote, God is still in control. At the end of the day, my hope is not in the White House. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the worst person gets voted into the, into office, the person that I did not vote for, if, if he or she gets into office, I refuse to get depressed over the matter because my hope was not in them to begin with. Anyways, my hope always is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's stay focused on him no matter who's in the White House, no matter who the governor or the mayor or the president is, Jesus Christ remains the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So when you vote, you just got to keep those things in mind. You know, we're Christians first. And uh, let me read to you a couple verses here real quick uh, in regard to this thought I'm trying to establish here in Daniel chapter number four. 
Daniel chapter number 4, the Bible says in verse number 17, uh, it says that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth, setteth up over it the basest of men. And that's actually a verse that some of my friends that would argue against voting, they say, well, see there, God sets up whoever he wants to in, 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 in office. Yeah, but here's the thing. I believe that the leadership of the people, the leadership many times is a reflection of the people. And yes, God is in the background pulling strings and he's the real, he, he's the one running the show and, and all this. But you know what, brethren? Uh, I believe that when God sees that a significant amount of his people are, in, are, are, are on their knees praying for a better man to get in office, I believe every now and then God answers our prayers. And that's where a vote would, would, would come in handy when God sees enough people uh, throwing their support uh, behind someone. Every now and then, you know what? God puts someone uh, in a position. I believe God can put someone in position to give us a little bit of relief. And so voting is just another way to express our opinion as to, you know, what we think about who should be in office. And so again, I don't think that this is a verse that would, uh, that would contradict the idea of voting, but I do think that we need to be aware of the fact what this verse does show us is that no matter what, God is the one in control. God is the one in control. And so, uh, in Daniel, he goes on to say in verse, uh, 25, let me read to you verses uh, in Daniel 4, verse 25. He says uh, in the second half of the verse, the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Verse 26, and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, that thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. This was uh, God dealing with the most powerful man on the earth back then, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king over the Babylonian Empire. And he makes it very clear to Nebuchadnezzar. He says, he tells Nebuchadnezzar, don't get too prideful. You need to understand that the heavens do rule. I'm the one in charge over everything is what God is saying. God is sovereign. God is in control. There's a verse in Proverbs 21, verse 1 that says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and the rivers, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So whenever you vote, just bear in mind that no matter what, God is in control. Okay, but, uh, but I do think that it is a good idea for Christians to get involved. Now, again, if, if you don't want to vote, I would encourage you to do so, but I, you know, I'm not going to argue with you about it or break fellowship with you over it. Uh, you know, that's your prerogative. But uh, as I finish this, this thought out, let me just give you a few things to bear in mind as Christians, okay? Because we're Christians first before anything else. So a few things to bear in mind as Christians when we are preparing to vote. Whenever you go to vote, remember your Christian values and principles and stay true to your Christian values and principles. Vote according to your Christian values and principles. So here's a few things to think about. Which candidate will better defend life? Which is the first of all God-given rights. I mean, if you don't have life, you don't have anything. <laughs> we can't even start a conversation if you're not even alive. So the God-given right of life is the first and foremost of all God-given rights. Okay, that's why we as Christians take a staunch stand against Abortion. We believe life begins at conception, and I have a whole message you can find on our YouTube channel where I give you verses from the Bible and also some scientific data to back that statement up. But we, as Bible-believing Christians, we stand against abortion. We believe in the right to life, okay? So when you vote, you ought to take into consideration where does this candidate stand when it comes to life? Okay, that's a pretty important issue, is the issue of life. All right, 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Well, you can't have liberty and the pursuit of happiness if you don't have life first. So vote according to that. Who's going to better defend life? Not only that, who is going to better preserve and fight for our religious liberties so that we as Christians can continue to do what we do as Christians to operate as Christians? Uh, we had about thir we had thirty one people show up for soul winning uh, this morning, the day of the making of this video. Praise the Lord. And we went out into our community and we preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. We gave out gospel tracts. We uh, invited folks out to church. We engaged people. Do you know that that would be considered illegal in a lot of countries around the world? Thank God for the religious liberties that we take for granted here in the United States of America. And so when I go to vote, I want to vote for who, whatever candidate is going to fight for for, for our rights to continue to enjoy what we enjoy, the religious liberties that we enjoy here in America. Uh, you need to take that into consideration. Who's going to best preserve our right to religious liberty? Who is going to better defend the freedom of speech? I thank God that I have the freedom to preach whatever the Holy Spirit puts upon my heart when I step behind uh, the pulpit every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every time I step behind the pulpit, I thank God that I have the liberty to preach the gospel without the fear that some people have where, in countries where they have to operate underground. They're afraid that at any moment during the church service, the government can bust in there with AK-47s and handcuffs to haul them off to jail because preaching the gospel is illegal in certain countries. I am so grateful that that's not a problem I have to deal with where I minister in my part of the world. So if I'm going to vote for a candidate, I want to know which candidate is going to do a better job of preserving that right, my right to, to say what I truly believe, okay, the freedom of speech. And then finally, uh, which candidate is going to better support Israel? And I know that this is a hot topic nowadays and there's a lot of anti-Zionist, anti, some that are even anti-Semitic, not all, but some that would uh, disagree with what Christians and, and, and Bible-believing preachers like myself preach when it comes to Genesis 12, 3, where God uh, told Abraham, he said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. I do believe that that is a promise from the Lord that any people that would bless Israel, God would bless them in return. And any people that would curse Israel, God would curse them in return. I believe history demonstrates the truth of that. And I believe one of the reasons why America is such a blessed nation is because of our support of the nation of Israel. I understand all the things about how Israel, you know, they're... There, there are enemies for the gospel's sake, according to Romans chapter 11, and they need to be saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, just like any Gentile, just like anyone else. I get all that, but I do believe uh, that Genesis 12, 3, the Abrahamic covenant, is a promise of a blessing upon those that blesses the nation that God will one day restore and rule from when he returns. And so I support that. And I'm interested in which candidate is going to also support Israel. So these are just a few things as Christians that I would recommend you bear in mind when you do go to the voting booth. But to answer the question, uh, do I think that Christians ought to vote? I do. And I hope that I've given you some things to uh, think about to encourage you in this matter. May God bless you.